morning San Antonio starts right now. Downtown San Antonio is rattled by a series of electrical explosions that all happened underground. We are live from where it all happened coming up this morning. Plus, after almost three years on the run, police have arrested a man accused of killing a taxi cab driver back in 2019. What we're learning this morning. And taking a live look out at the Alamo City, 48 degrees to start your Saturday morning. What is the rest of the day? What does Halloween look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a few moments. Until then, good morning. 6 o'clock this Saturday, October 30th. Are you feeling spooky? I What's am. I have my, these are my ghost earrings. About oh, to put them on. <laughs> okay. Yeah, no, I'm so excited. Mm -hmm. I love it. I think Halloween should never be on the 31st. I think it should always be on the last weekend, oh. the last Saturday of October. So that way kids don't have to go back to school the yeah, next morning. Like That's let smart. Let them stay up, get the sugar rush. Eat National the holiday. I feel the let same the way about parents, the Super Bowl. You know, drink wine with the kids. Well, I don't know why it always has to come back to wine. So <laughs> well, that's only natural. It's only <laughs> 6 a.m. We have to talk wine. <laughs> so yeah, you know, Sarah, there are going to be a lot of people enjoying Halloween parties or get togethers tonight as opposed to tomorrow just because, you know, it's Saturday yeah. rather than Sunday. But no matter which way you slice it, the weekend is going to be beautiful beautiful and it's going to feel great outside for any kind of costumes that you'll have on. Now temperatures outside right now, some of the coldest weather we've dealt with so far this season. It is 47 degrees at the airport this morning. Winds are from the northwest at about 10 miles per hour, but one big difference today compared to the last few days is that we'll have relatively calmer wind conditions out there today, so not as much of a breeze. Let's take a look at some of the temperatures too elsewhere. 40 in Kirk 47 in New Braunfels, 43 in Hondo, 45 in Uvalde, and it's 46 is the wake up temperature in Gonzales. So yeah, Halloween weekend, nothing spooky about the weather this weekend. 80 degrees today and sunny with low humidity. We'll start off a few degrees warmer tomorrow and be a few degrees warmer in the afternoon as well for Halloween itself. But coming up, I'll have a look at your trick or treat forecast and when our next cold front will arrive to San Antonio in South Central Texas. All in a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, electrical explosions overnight downtown San Antonio. It had people on high alert. Those explosions happening underground Jefferson Street and Martin Street right near Travis Park. It's where we find our Stephen Cavazos, who's live this morning. Stephen, do investigators know what caused these explosions? Well, that's something San Antonio police are still trying to figure out at this hour, Max and Sarah. What we first want to show you is some of what we're seeing this morning are some city's crews that are still inspecting some of these manholes that we're told went 15 to 20 feet in the air. But not just that, some of these stoplights, check this out, at Martin and Jefferson are still out at this hour. Of course, drivers are going to want to drive carefully through this area, but those underground explosions happened around uh, just after midnight and led to a domino effect of electrical outages, evacuations, and damage. Take a look at this video. That first explosion happened just after midnight and again knocked out power for at least 10 city blocks. People saying at the St. Anthony were forced outside and police tell us that explosion blew up one vehicle. While the power came back around 1:45 this morning, a second explosion happened 10 minutes after and blasted a red truck several feet forward. Minutes after that, a third explosion happened. Now this series of electrical explosions of course had those manholes that went up 15 to 20 feet in the air. Now there are still some blockades here in the downtown San Antonio area and again we still do have some city crews that are out here inspecting the scene and along with these uh, uh, these stoplights that are still out at this hour pedestrians uh, that are walking through the downtown San Antonio area later this morning make sure that you are walking with caution drivers it's probably best to avoid this area at this time investigators are not sure what sparked this underground explosion this is a developing story and we'll have more on air and online at ksat.com Stephen Cavazos ksat 12 news Max Sarah Thank you, Stephen. We'll check back in with you around 630. We are getting a firsthand look at a man arrested for shooting and killing a taxi cab driver inside the victim's own cab. This happened about two years ago. Baldemar Hinojosa Jr. taken into custody just last night, being charged with capital murder. Now, police say Hinojosa had been on the run since January of 2019. The motive behind the shooting is still unclear. Now, this all happened back in 2019 when police were called out to the parking lot of a Texas thrift store just off I-35 near 410 in Windcrest for a shooting. When officers arrived, they found the taxi driver shot dead right in the driver's seat. Millions of American children between the ages of 5 to 11 are likely just days away from their first dose of the Pfizer vaccine. That's right. It's news that's welcomed by a lot of parents, but as ABC's Carino Mitchell reports, other parents apprehensive. 
28 million American children are now one step closer to getting increased protection against COVID-19. The FDA granting emergency use authorization for Pfizer's COVID shot for children ages 5 to 11. To me, the, the, the rationale here is protect your children so that they can get back towards uh, normal life. The first 15 million doses now being shipped, so they're ready to go into arms possibly as early as Wednesday after an expected sign-off from the CDC. Some parents are looking forward to getting their children vaccinated. Leslie Lopez pulled her son out of school before he started first grade worried about COVID. I just want my child to be able to do that so I can really rest and feel more at peace of mind. So, yeah, definitely is something we're very excited about. But some parents aren't so sure. It just seems like it's so it come out so fast. And it, we're talking about a child. It, it, I feel like it's different for me. Meanwhile, New York City is bracing for a possible worker shortage as thousands of municipal employees defied a Friday deadline to get vaccinated. New York City is going to come to a crisis on Monday morning. Response times are going to go through the roof. Firefighters facing off with city leaders, the mayor insisting the mandates are working, tweeting that vaccination rates among city workers are on the rise, and the U.S. Supreme Court denying a request to block Maine's vaccine mandate for health care workers, which doesn't permit any religious exemptions. Karina Mitchell, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, a terrifying discovery in South Texas. 75 migrants found crammed inside a refrigerated tractor trailer. Pictures released by Border Patrol showed the migrants sitting on top of pallets of flour. The group was found Wednesday during an immigration inspection at a checkpoint in Edinburgh. The temperature was set at 58 degrees Fahrenheit. Agents say the migrants were shivering and trying to stay warm. Most of them are from Central America, while others were said to be Mexican nationals. The driver was placed under arrest and the migrants were taken into custody. Well, Queen Elizabeth now being asked to rest for the next two weeks by her doctors. All of this comes more than a week after she spent the night in the hospital. Now, a spokesperson says that the hospital visit was described as a preliminary investigation and they said it was not COVID related. The 95 year old monarch is said to be in good spirits. While she's not advised to continue in person official visits, she can still participate in virtual visits and do some light desk work. So here's to a fast recovery. I'm sure she's just, she just is always busy. She yeah. likes to be always working. <laughs> Time now, 6.07, 48 degrees out. High school football last night, Max. Oh my goodness. We had a top tier game in the 40s. Overtime, big game in our big game coverage. Johnson and Reagan, we have the highlights still ahead. And if you haven't started thinking about retirement yet, you might want to. Coming up after the break, some tips to get you started in the biggest mistakes people make when it comes to saving for retirement. And it is Halloween weekend. That is terrifying. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have all your decorations up? Decorations are up. I have okay. my scary Dia de los Muertos scarecrow Ooh. that like the face lights up. It's, it's fun. I, I saw I'm, some uh, I pictures. I cannot wait for trick or treaters to get Oh scared. my goodness. Do you have the, the king size candies? Not king size. But oh, you're the worst. I get no, I get the good kind. Though. Okay, we'll explain after the break. Well, retirement can sneak up on you quickly. If you haven't saved enough, you might feel panicked with each year passing. That's right, but as Jonathan Cotto explains, you can still get your finances back on track no matter your age. Are you counting down the years until you can retire? Are you ready? But your savings account isn't. First, figure out how much you'll need to retire. Make sure you take charge of your financial future. Consider the 4% rule. If you were to withdraw 4.5% from your retirement portfolio in the first year and adjust this percentage for inflation in the coming years, you should have enough money for 30 years before running out. For example, if you want to live off $45,000 each year, you will need to save $1 million and then some extra to counteract inflation. But if you withdraw money out of a portfolio that's losing value because of market volatility, you're going to have less at the end. You'll also want to make catch-up contributions. Once you turn 50, you have the option to contribute $1,000 more a year to an IRA or an extra $6,500 to a 401k plan. Another option, rethink your lifestyle. You may want to move to a less expensive city. U.S. News and World Reports list Myrtle Beach, South Carolina, Asheville, North Carolina, and Ocala, Florida, the top three best and most affordable places to retire.
AARP says the biggest mistakes people make when planning retirement is expecting to work beyond the normal retirement age, expecting to always be healthy, taking too many risks with their investments and taking on their children's debt. Jonathan Cotto, KSAT 12 News. 48 degrees at 613 this morning. It is crisp out there. It's feeling perfect for Halloween weekend, Sarah Spivey. It's beginning to look. No, I won't, no, I won't. no, no, too soon. I, although I know a lot of people, as soon as Halloween is over, they're going to put up the Christmas I saw tree. People posting Christmas trees on their timelines, and I was like, no, oh no, no, no. Oh my goodness! No, you got to do Thanksgiving yet? I know. I went to uh, Michael's yesterday, mm. and do I that. was getting a costume <laughs> together, and there was tons of Christmas stuff out. Mm. They were stocking up the Christmas things. Well, yeah, a chilly start out there. Uh, Forty-seven degrees outside right now. This is the coolest we've been officially at the San Antonio. International Airport since April 21st, so 192 days. It's nice to see those temperatures dropping back down. I think a lot of us around South Central Texas enjoy the cooler starts. That's uh, the coolest we've been in over six months. It's 41 though up at Bernie Stage Airfield, 40 in comfort. I would not be surprised if temperatures dip a couple more degrees, especially up in the hill country before sunrise here after 745. Uh, 48 in Castroville, 47 in New Braunfels, and 47 at JBSA Randolph. Yes, this is a future cast. You're looking at a loop here, but <laughs> there's not going to be any clouds in the sky for us today. We're just going to be nice and comfortable. A high temperature close to 80 degrees around the metro area and up in the hill country. Elsewhere, out toward Del Rio, Eagle Pass, Carriza Springs, those temperatures will be a little bit warmer, likely in the uh, mid to upper 80s out there. But one big difference in the weather today as compared to the last couple days is we're not going to have a breeze today. Winds will be light and variable uh, generally throughout the day. So uh, none of that colder air moving in from the north. Instead, we'll just have sunshine. We'll already be at 60 degrees by 10. So we're in the 40s now. We'll already be in the 60s by 10. 72 at noon, sunny and low humidity, 80 degrees once again for the high. Sun will set at 649. I know a lot of people have those uh, evening plans tonight. Maybe you're going to a Halloween party in the neighborhood. Just know that it is going to be a bit chilly tonight. Temperature will dip down into the 50s and 60s after sunset at uh, 649. And yeah, I think that's a little bit chilly for many of us around South Central Texas. So bring that jacket. Now we've been enjoying the low humidity and we're going to continue to enjoy the low humidity through tomorrow. By Monday and Tuesday, it'll be a little bit more noticeable closer to the 60 degree range. Again, we're not talking about oppressive humidity out there, but just noticeable mugginess, especially in the morning hours uh, through the middle of the week and then we get another front that will arrive Wednesday night, Thursday and that will drop our temperatures even more. All right, one of the reasons why we're seeing those winds start to relax is because uh, the big low pressure system that was totally funneling in wind speeds of up to 50 miles per hour in parts of the central plains has moved on off to the east. In its wake, this front is going to approach, but it's going to be slow on the approach. We're not really going to see it moving through until the middle of this upcoming week. And as it does so, starting late on Wednesday, I think we could have some storms in the area. Now, probably not as widespread as this particular forecast model is indicating, but uh, there is a chance for rain with this front. Storms uh, during the evening on Wednesday and then behind the front, We'll likely have scattered showers and our high temperatures will actually only be in the 60s uh, for Thursday. So a, a relatively strong cold front on the way in the middle of the week. But tomorrow, Sunday, if you're going trick or treating, it's going to be nice. Temperatures will uh, fall from the 80s at 5 p.m. into the 70s, generally right around the time of trick or treating. Sunsets at about a 649 tomorrow. So yeah. That's a dancing mummy right there. All right, we'll be looking at temperatures close to 82 for the highs for most of the week, and then that front arrives bringing with it isolated storms and then scattered showers on Thursday. Look at those highs only in the 60s. That's always my favorite graphic every year. The yeah. dancing mummy. The dancing mummy. You do that well, Sarah. Thanks. Killing it. Mm -hmm. 617, 48 degrees up. Coming up on GMSA. All right, we have the best catches, touchdowns, trick plays and scores from high school football around. Look at that, number 11 for seven. Plus, oh, this killed me. The Atlanta <laughs> Braves so close to having a no-hitter no game last night in game three of the World Series highlights after the break. 
All right. Before break, we are going to check in with the lotto. Did you, uh, did you buy a ticket? No, I didn't. Still hasn't hit that hundred million dollar mark. It has, but I didn't do it. Oh, uh, okay. Pick three, six, two, seven. Fireball one. Daily four, one, eight, zero, six. Fireball eight. Catch five, four, six, seven, nineteen, thirty-five. And Mega Millions, 15, 26, 28, 35, 45, Mega Ball 4, Mega Plier 3. All right. Sorry, Astros fans. It was not an easy night. The Braves taking a 2 1 lead last night in the World Series, shutting out the Astros 2 0. The Braves took a no hit bid into the eighth inning, second longest no hit bid in World Series since 1956. Houston, this is going to sound a little harsh. They didn't even come close to a hit until pinch hitter Diaz bloop, bloop, a leadoff single in the eighth on a ball that looked catchable. The Astros' big stars, Jose Altuve, Carlos Correa, and Alex Bregman, surrounded by some not so happy fans. They were chanting cheater all night long. So don't worry. Astros hoping to bounce back tonight. Game four of the World Series today, 7 p.m., and of course, it's a Braves home turf. All right, here we go. Highlights of the night, high school football. Last night's big game in our big game coverage. Trying to see who could take the District 28-6A title. Johnson and Reagan, two ranked teams. This game going down to the wire. Under a minute left to play. Johnson down eight on Reagan's goal line. The Jags QB threw it to the back corner of the end zone. That was a touchdown. Johnson went for two. Beautiful trick play. Direct snack to the running back, flipped it to another player, and then found his own guy in the end zone. Sending that game into overtime at 43 apiece. The game winner. Wait, I just want to watch this play. Here we go. And then, ooh, cuts on a dime. I think I'd like tear my entire knee up if I tried that. Either way, a game winner, 42-yard field goal. Johnson survives and thrives in OT, 46-43. Whew. That didn't get your heart pounding. I don't know what will. Here's a look at some of the other scores from around the night. Warren, 17. Marshall, number 7 Marshall, 45. Churchill, 22. Brandeis, 30. Reagan, here we go. That was the game of the night. 43. And Johnson, the champs, 46. Madison, 52. Lee, 14. But don't worry. If you got the high school bug, we have the answer today. High school football continues. Two afternoon games, Clark and MacArthur, Highlands, Edison, and then three night games. Oh, my goodness. And, of course, O'Connor versus Taft tonight, 7 p.m. In case you miss them, in case you're doing things, in case you're preparing for Halloween, we're going to have all the highlights tonight on the Night Beat and, of course, tomorrow on GMSA. And speaking of tomorrow on GMSA, we're going to have highlights for this game. Of course, the Spurs back in action tonight, looking for revenge, taking on the champs and the reigning finals MVP, Giannis Antetokounmpo, taking on the Bucks in Milwaukee. Tip-off set for 7 p.m. this evening. Right now, the Spurs sitting at 1-4, and four, so really hoping to, you know, up the, the win column here, Sarah. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. There you go. 623, 48 degrees out. All right, let's take a look at some Halloween costumes Aww. from our viewers. We have some zombie Nacho Libre. Now, that's <laughs> creative. I love that. Good job, guys. Those are super cute. Aww. Take this is Amelia. She is celebrating her first Halloween. She just turned six months old. Keep sending in your Halloween pics. We love to see them. You can post them on ksat.com in our Halloween section under the Entertainment tab. Okay, take a look at this elaborate Halloween display. This is in San Antonio on the city's south side. This is at a home on Villaret Boulevard, which is just inside Loop 410. All right, so the display features characters from the Disney movie Coco, the movie centered around the Day of the Dead holiday. It is coming up on Monday and Tuesday. This is awesome. Is this what your house looks like? No, nothing, nothing <laughs> near this. This, this is amazing. Okay, those cutouts take mm -hmm. such a long time. Look, they even, Aww. oh my God, the. The uh, Dia de los Muertos bride and, oh, yeah. and groom. Uh, have you seen Coco? No, I've not. Max, get ready to cry. Oh. <laughs> it's one of my favorite Pixar movies. I mean, Pixar just gets it. They really got me in the heart when there I was alive. I did see Buzz Lightyear's coming out. Oh, so, there you go. Very excited. All right, time now, 628, 48 degrees out. Well, still to come on GMSA, a fiery crash caught on camera, how the driver was able to survive this major accident. And if you're waiting to get your passport, you are not alone. You may. Ooh, have to wait a lot, but here's good news. That wait time could be cut down. We're going to explain. Now let's take a look at some pumpkin patch pictures. We love this. Aww. This is little Wes. 
I, you know what? Thank you so much to our viewers for taking these pictures and sending them in. And these kids look like they're Aww. having fun in Pumpkin Patch with their faces painted. I just love October. Mm -hmm. I love these pictures. Keep sending us your Halloween pictures. We love to see them. You can post them on ksat.com. Good morning, welcome back. Happy Halloween weekend, 632 this morning, Saturday, October 30th. We are just a day away from Halloween. Okay, I have my Halloween costume mm -hmm. ready. Uh, yeah. I am going to debut it at the end of the 8 a.m. show tomorrow. Okay, look at that tease. And, and Sarah Spivey also has an amazing Halloween costume. Mm. Max, are you, I told Max it is mandatory. I get a call and I'm like immediately, I'm like, do I need to bail you out of jail? <laughs> She's like, no, I, I just want to prepare Max. you. Well. Max mm, mm. should have a costume tomorrow, but he's not going to. No, he's, he's going <laughs> to. He's not cool. Like he's that. going to. Okay. I'm making okay. him. Okay. Yeah, uh, but yeah, I'm excited. I'll show you all that tomorrow during the 8 o'clock show. costume's cute. Well, tomorrow uh, we are going to be just a touch warmer than today, but this morning we're waking up in the 40s. This is the coldest we've been since the middle of April, officially at the airport. It's 47 degrees, 40 in Kerrville, 43 in Hondo, 47 in New Braunfels, and 44 in Uvalde. And guess what? Temperatures could even drop another degree or two before the sun rises close to 745 this morning. By the way, coldest part of the day is usually right before sunrise. And warmest part of the day is a few hours after noon. And today will be up to 80 degrees. So we are going to get a lot warmer than what we're, we are at right outside right now. But all weekend long, we're going to have low humidity and it's going to be pleasant. Tomorrow morning, waking up at 52. And in the afternoon tomorrow, waking up close to 82 degrees. All right. Trick or treat forecast. You ready for this spooky good forecast? Well, temperatures should be right near about in the 70s with low humidity and the sun will set tomorrow at 648. So we have got a lot to chat about in the forecast, including our next cold front. I'll have a look ahead coming up in a few minutes. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, electrical explosions ending in evacuations, outages and damage in the downtown San Antonio area. Police telling us this all happened at Jefferson and Martin Street just after midnight. Our Stephen Cavazos is live there this morning. Stephen, can you see any damage out there from last night's ex explosion? Max Harrow, we haven't spotted any exact damage just yet, but we do still have some city crews that are inspecting some of these manholes that we're told uh, blew 15 to 20 feet in the air. But we do have some good news to talk about because those stoplights that have been out for a little while here at Martin and Jefferson looks like they are working again. Traffic has been moving through this area pretty smoothly, so that's some good news. But those electrical explosions obviously led to a mess this morning. We're told a total of three actually happened underground, and San Antonio police are still trying to figure out how it all happened. Now, that first explosion happened just after midnight and knocked out power for at least 10 city blocks. People staying at the St. Anthony Hotel were forced to stay or forced outside, that is, and police tell us that explosion blew up one vehicle. Now, while the power did come back around 145 this morning, a second explosion happened 10 minutes after and blasted a red truck several feet forward. Minutes after that, a third explosion happened. Now, again, we still do have some city crews that are out here at Martin and Jefferson that are inspecting some of the aftermath following those electrical explosions. Thank Thankfully, no one was hurt uh, during this mess, but of course, this is still an ongoing investigation. Make sure you stay with KSAT for this developing story. Max Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. Also new this morning, a man dead, and right now police are searching for the driver who hit and killed him. This is what we know right now. Police tell us around 9 last night, a man was walking while he was and then hit while he was trying to cross Fredericksburg Road. This all happening just north of Vance Jackson. He was hit and killed by a white minivan. The driver did not stop and render aid. Witnesses stayed at the scene to give police their statements. Tell them what happened right now. The man's identity has not yet been released. Police still searching for the driver of that white minivan. In your morning headlines, an SUV rolling over, killing four people inside and injuring 11 others. Investigators believe most of them are migrants from Guatemala. This all happened 100 miles east of El Paso near Van Horn. Some of the victims airlifted to a hospital in El Paso. Three are listed in critical condition. It's unclear exactly what led to that rollover. Well, Texas, one of about a dozen states across the country suing to block the vaccine mandate for federal contractors. The Biden administration requiring those contractors and their employees to get the vaccine. So state attorney general Ken Paxton 
claiming that the administration needs congressional approval to enforce the mandate and saying that the Biden administration acted unconstitutionally. The state has repeatedly pushed back on vaccine mandates. Governor Greg Abbott even expanding an executive order to block vaccine requirements. Just so you know, studies have shown that the vaccine has prevented more serious cases of COVID. Most of the COVID patients in the hospital are not vaccinated. Well, you might not have to wait as long to get an American passport. Yesterday, the State Department said routine processing of a passport application now takes about 8 to 11 weeks. In mid-July, the department said wait times for both new and renewal passport applications would be up to 18 weeks. Now, if you pay a fee for expedited processing, wait times are now at about 5 to 7 weeks. That's down from 12 weeks earlier this summer. The State Department said previous delays were due to tremendous backlog caused by the pandemic. All right, headed to Florida. Check out a wild video of Florida driver able to survive a fiery crash. Oh my goodness. And the reason they were able to sur uh, survive is because a group of police officers happened to be gathered nearby. The video released by West Palm West Palm Police Department showing a speeding white sedan crashing into that pole around 2 a.m. on Wednesday. The speeding car avoiding hitting the parked squad cars. Police able to jump out jump into action as the vehicle caught fire. One officer used a fire extinguisher. The others helped pull the motors out of that burning vehicle. Still unclear what caused the crash or whether any charges will now be filed. Well, Dole is recalling certain packages of its garden's classic salads due to possible listeria contamination. The FDA says the packages have a best by date of October 25th. They come in 24 and 12 ounce sizes. The items were sold in 10 states under the name Dole, Marketside, Kroger or Salad Classics. It's important to mention Texas is not one of the states where these items were sold. No illnesses have been reported, but listeria showed up during a routine test in Georgia. With the FDA authorizing the emergency use authorization of the Pfizer vaccine for children ages 5 to 11 in Texas, that could mean up to 2.9 million children are eligible to get the vaccine. We know a lot of parents, a lot of families have a lot of questions ranging from safety to possible side effects. That is why tomorrow on Leading SA at 8 a.m., Dr. Tess Barton, a pediatric infectious disease expert at UT Health San Antonio, she is joining us live. If you have any questions you would like to ask the doctor, you can submit them right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. Then join us tomorrow on GMS 8 at 8 a.m. Well, there are tons of Halloween events going on this weekend in San Antonio and surrounding areas. One of those events is out at the Natural Bridge Caverns. The family oh. can visit the animals and get some goodies. There will be trick-or-treating today and tomorrow from 3 to 5 p.m. There will also be free entertainment there. You can find this event and others going on right now on our website, ksat.com, under the entertainment section. Time now, 639, 48 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA, what researchers oh. in California Hello. uncovered and what they are calling an extraordinary discovery about one of the largest flying birds in the world. And coming up next, which small SUVs held up the best in a tougher crash test? 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz explains the results. Crash tests and some eye-opening results. 23% of deadly traffic crashes involving side crashes. So how do new small SUVs hold up? As 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz shows us, there is room for improvement. These are new tougher crash tests designed to simulate a two-ton SUV or pickup slamming into the side of a small SUV. We know that if you're in a good rated vehicle, your chances of dying as a driver are about 70% lower than if you're in a poor rated vehicle. The Insurance Institute strapped in the dummies and crashed 20 new models. Only one got a good rating, the Mazda CX-5. The vehicle structure held up extremely well during the test. The airbags did a really good job of protecting the heads of the crash test dummies. Crash after crash, they measured how well a compartment held up, how well the airbags protected, and what types of injuries the two female-sized dummies sustained. Nine SUVs got acceptable ratings, including the Honda CRV and Toyota RAV4, but two got poor ratings, the Mitsubishi Eclipse Cross, and the Honda HRV. Watch what happens when the barrier crashes into it at 37 miles an hour. Structurally, testers say this SUV was the worst of the test. The result was our barrier intruding almost halfway into the driver's seat. The Insurance Institute says cars are safer than they've ever been. Still, they're hoping that these tests push car makers to make them even safer. 
Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. All right, well, back here at home, 48 degrees out there. A little chilly to start the day. I enjoy, I, I enjoy, I'm mm -hmm. enjoying it. I love yeah. it. Love I, think, it. I think generally most people who live here enjoy the cooler mornings. Yeah, we're mm -hmm. over the heat. We, I mean, we just don't have them all that much and for a short period of time every year. And this is the coolest morning we've had since April, guys. Whoop, whoop. Yeah, temperatures have dipped down into the 40s, 47 degrees at the airport. Sun officially rises around 745. So we have another hour here to allow for temperatures to drop even a couple more degrees. And that is entirely possible. Uh, it is dry, dry, dry outside, and it's in the 30s now in parts of the Hill Country. 39 at Bernie's Stage Airfield, 39 in Comfort, and 39 in Kerrville. You know, it's that time of the year where we start to maybe be a little concerned about morning freezes, but I'll put your mind at ease right now, especially north in the Hill Country. We are not going to see a freeze uh, for at least the next seven days there on the forecast. So freeze or not in the forecast, but it is down into the 30s up in the Hill Country this morning. 44 in New Valley, 43 in Carrizo Springs. On the radar and satellite, a big wound up low pressure. You can see really see that counterclockwise movement. This low pressure system was the reason why we had seen such gusty conditions Wednesday, Thursday and a little bit yesterday. It is now further off to the west and so our winds today are going to be light and variable. Uh, maybe a wind from the southwest occasionally at five miles per hour or from the north at five miles per hour. Light and variable wind conditions today, but total sunshine. We're in the 40s now, but will likely already be in the 60s by the mid morning hours and around noon, 72 degrees, 80 degrees for the high temperature, low humidity, total sunshine all day long. And if you have Saturday night plans, maybe you're going to go to a local neighborhood Halloween party or something like that. And make sure to bring the light jacket with you because it's going to get chilly pretty soon. By midnight, we'll be back into the 50s. So dry as a bone out there right now. Desert dry air with dew points in the 30s. But watch what happens tomorrow. Dew points will actually get back up into the 50s. Now, that's not necessarily very noticeable. It's just that there will be an increase in the humidity and it won't really be that noticeable tomorrow. So tomorrow's still going to be a nice low humidity day, even during trick or treating time in the evening hours. But then by Monday, we'll have muggy conditions back in the forecast. Now, not oppressively humid, but definitely noticeable. But before it can get too humid, a cold front is going to move through. And this cold front will be moving through Wednesday into Thursday, bringing with it a chance for storms Wednesday night, isolated storms to scattered storms uh, more than widespread. And then by f Thursday, once that front is through the area, we'll only be looking at highs in the 60s as opposed to the 80s behind that front because it's going to stay cloudy and there will be a chance for scattered showers on Thursday as well. Uh, so a big shake up in the weather coming soon, but for now, it looks great for trick or treating tomorrow night. The sun will set at 648. So if you're planning on taking the kids before the sun sets, let's say 5, 6 p.m., know that it's going to be a touch on the warmer side, 82 degrees for the high tomorrow. But as soon as that sun sets, our temperatures will drop into the 60s and into the 70s with low humidity. So you'll be dancing like this mummy or the Frankenstein there uh, because the weather will feel so nice outside. All right, looking ahead to the forecasting. Again, just a reminder, we'll be looking at highs in the 80s with some humidity increasing by the middle of the week. And then that front will arrive, dropping our high temperatures back into the 60s. So that's a real deal fall cold front later on in this week. Max and Sarah. Are you more the mummy dancing or Frankenstein? More the mummy because it has a little mm. more of that like leg mashed it's potato. It's like the twist. Uh, well, like the whereas do I'll twist. do the running man. You like so the, the running Frankenstein. man? Frankenstein. Yeah. Mm, mm. That makes sense. You know. yeah. I'll just commentate. <laughs> 648, 48 oh, degrees out. All right, stay with us after the oh, break. We'll get a that. preview of today's latest episode of Texas Eats with David Elder. It's a uh, really well balanced dish. So I'm going to put some lime on it because when you got lime, you got to use it, right? Yeah. All on top. That looks crazy good. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. That is incredible. Mm -hmm. Give me some elbow love. Bam! The crickets are fun because it just kind of adds that element of surprise to the dish, mm -hmm. but they're really just a crunchy texture yeah. on there. All the seasoning that's on the meat, 
seared really nicely as well. You have that creaminess coming off the guacamole. I mean, and the little crunch on the tortillas is exactly what you want as well. It's a great vehicle for all the flavors. I like the cucumber on there. Yeah, that's exactly. a really nice Fresh, freshness. Yeah. That is a great bite. This next one, though, is a little bit more for what you're known for, the black trompo, right? Black pastor. So the, this dish is, uh, is made of uh, pork back and pork shoulder, and it's marinated in recado negro and five spice, Asian spice. That looks oh, so good. My stomach's growling. Um, have you eaten crickets before? I have. Mm. They uh, get t they get they taste like sunflower seeds, and they get crunchy. Crunchy, stuck in your teeth. Okay. Yeah. It's an interesting story. Here's another one. Scientists in San Diego have discovered what they're calling virgin births among an endangered species of bird. They uncovered evidence that it, at least two California condors successfully reproduced without a male. Mm. The discovery came during a routine analysis of samples. It showed each condor was genetically related to the female who hatched them, but neither were related to a male. The quote, virgin birth phenomenon is widely known among biologists, but this discovery is unique because it's very rare in birds. So the scientists now say this raises more questions about whether this may happen undetected in other species. Huh, the endangered species of condor, also one of the largest flying birds in the world. And get this, there are only about 200 left in the California wild. All right, this is next story is very frustrating to me. Okay. Merriam-Webster adding 455 new words and phrases to the dictionary just this month. Plenty of new coronavirus-related entries, including breakthrough, super spreader, and vaccine passport. Here's where it gets frustrating. Also added TBH for, mm. to be honest. Thank you for explaining. Or FTW, meaning for the win. Yeah. And am I right? It's like, <laughs> or am I right? Oh, Yep, that's what that Got means that there, one. if you didn't know. Other newcomers include dad bod, huh. air fryer, have one of those, okay. horchata, and doorbell camera. Huh. If you're unsure of what any of these words or phrases mean, go ahead and knock yourself out. Look, look I think up. you did a great job explaining them. It's frustrating because they now have acronyms in the dictionary, the TBH and the FTW, for the win, to be honest. I, I'm, I'm really not that hip or cool. They, did they put sus in there yet? That's a cool word. Time now is 655, 48 degrees out. <laughs> All right, more pumpkin pack picks. This is little Camila visiting a pumpkin pack. Oh, she's got, look at her little locks, so cute. Oh, and we have the Freeman family at the pumpkin patch. Two-year-old boys going for their first time. <sighs> Gotta love it. Keep sending your Halloween picks in. We love them. You can post them right now. Just head to ksat.com. Good morning, coming up here on GMA, world leaders gathering in Rome at the G20 summit, a day after President Biden's historic meeting with the Pope and one-on-one -on -one with French President Macron. What's next on Biden's overseas agenda? Plus urgent security alert about a potential threat that may have ties to ISIS as the police presence is heightened around large shopping areas in the DC suburbs. And trucking debate disagreement over whether there really is a driver shortage, while some say the situation is dire and could get worse. What companies are doing to lure a new generation of truckers. Plus, we're getting you ready for Halloween. It's all ahead here on GMA. And looking outside right now, we're seeing the first light of the day here, and it is cool outside. It's chilly, in fact. 47 at the airport, 39 at Bernie Sage Airfield, 40 in Comfort, and 38 in Kerrville. Today, we'll be warming up to 80 degrees this afternoon with plenty of sunshine. It's going to be really nice all weekend long with low humidity. By the time the kids go trick-or-treating tomorrow night, temperatures should be in the 70s with low humidity. Ooh. A cold front arrives Wednesday, drops our temperatures back down to the 60s for highs. Fantastic. Fantastic. Well, we are going to take an hour long break for Good Morning America, but don't worry when we come back. We have so much to talk about. We have national, Texas, and local news. Plus, Stephen Cavazos. He's out at the Pearl. He's going to be showing us some Dios Muertos displays, so you want to stick around to see that. Fantastic. And if you guys missed any of the parade last night, it looked awesome. Pictures, videos, KSAT.com, and of course, everyone who was there Alicia Brera, Steve Spreester, RJ Marquez, all their social media. We'll see hey, you back here. David Elder will also be here at 8. Oh! Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Right now on GMSA at 8 a.m., homeowners and tourists downtown startled in the middle of the night a series of underground explosions. 
what we know about the cause. A popular San Antonio attraction spot transformed into a place of remembrance. We are live at the Pearl this morning showcasing this beautiful altar dedicated to the people of the Alamo City. That's coming up. 48 degrees. Sarah Spivey said it got down to 46 at one point this morning. She'll have our full weekend and Halloween forecast in just a bit. Good morning, 8 o'clock this Saturday, October 30th. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. We saw Steven out there. He had the jacket on. We saw a gorgeous sunrise and the coldest it's been since April. I love it. I am here for it. I love Steven's leather jacket Fantastic. and that look. It's a great crisp fall look. Also, is it going to be crispy for Halloween? <laughs> crispy means hot, I think, right? Does it? Crispy I, when outside. something's crispy, usually it's like overcooked. Is it really? No, when it's crisp outside. Okay, crisp is different from crispy, but I'll give it to you. It's feeling crispy uh, out here. So <laughs> we are going to warm up. Yes, that's right. But, you know, it's not going to be warm at all today. It'll just be nice and comfortable throughout the day. It is chilly, though, outside right now. Let's take a look out there with live cam. You can see the beautiful sunrise there off in the distance. 48 degrees right now at the airport, as Sarah and Max just mentioned. 38, though, up in Kerrville, so in the 30s in parts of the Hill Country. This is the time of year where the Hill Country often sees its first freeze, but no freezes in the forecast over the next few days, so no worries there for your plant life outside. 44 in Yavaldi, 43 in Crazy Springs, and 46 in Gonzales. This Halloween weekend is going to be anything but spooky as far as the weather is concerned. We'll have sunny skies today with low humidity, 80 degrees. Degrees. And tomorrow morning, starting a couple degrees warmer in the low 50s and 82 for the high tomorrow. So a beautiful, beautiful Halloween weekend. I'll have a look at your trick or treat forecast coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. Electrical explosions overnight in downtown San Antonio. It put the city on high alert. Those explosions happening underground at Jefferson Street and Martin Street right near Travis Park. Although police are still trying to figure out what caused the explosions, we know it led to a domino effect of electrical outages, evacuations and damage. The first explosion happened just after midnight and knocked out power for at least 10 city blocks. People staying at the St. Anthony were forced outside. Police telling us that explosion blew up one vehicle. The power came back on around 1.45 in the morning, but a second explosion happened 10 minutes later and blasted a red truck several feet forward. Minutes after that, a third explosion blew straight through a manhole up 15 to 20 feet in the air. Well, I just came out of a bar and I heard the explosion was just a block away, so I walked over here to check it out and wow, smoke coming out of the manholes or whatever. Uh, and then when I walked up to the manhole, the manhole cover was blown off. Now, at last check, there were still some barricades up downtown preventing traffic and pedestrians from crossing. Again, not exactly clear what sparked these underground electrical explosions, but once that information becomes available, we will obviously have it on air and online at KSAT.com. San Antonio police are looking for a driver this morning after a man was hit and killed on the city's northwest side. Police say around 9 last night, a man was hit while crossing Fredericksburg Road north of Vance Jackson by a white minivan. The driver did not stop. Witnesses stayed at the scene to give police their statements. Right now, the man's identity has not been released, and police are searching for the driver of that white minivan. Well, we now know the name of the man accused of shooting and killing a taxi driver in the victim's own taxi cab. All this happening two years ago. San Antonio police telling us after being on the run since that 2019 shooting, Beldemar Hinojosa Jr. taken into custody just last night, accused of killing Adam Hersey. Now, this is what we know. We reported when it happened. Police say they were initially called to a store off of I-35 near Loop 410 in Wincrest for a shooting call. When they arrived, they found Hersey shot dead in the driver's seat of his yellow cab minivan. Victims of friends of the victim said that he actually came to the United States from Somalia. Right now, investigation ongoing. The motive behind the shooting still unclear. Authorities still interviewing Hinojosa, but he could face charges of capital murder. Texas is one of about a dozen states suing to block the COVID-19 vaccine mandate for federal contractors. The Biden administration requires those contractors and their employees to get the COVID-19 vaccine. State Attorney General Ken Paxton claims the administration needs congressional approval to enforce the mandate and acted unconstitutionally. 
The state has repeatedly pushed back on vaccine requirements. Governor Greg Abbott even expanded an executive order to block vaccine requirements. And speaking of the vaccine, parents are now one step closer to getting their younger children vaccinated against COVID if they want to. The FDA granting emergency use authorization of Pfizer's vaccine for children ages 5 to 11 years old. However, the CDC still needs to greenlight the use of the vaccine. That could happen as early as Tuesday. The vaccine would require two doses three weeks apart. Then it takes about two weeks for full protection of the vaccine to kick in. Transforming the pearl into a place of worship. That is a mission of two local artists. In celebration of Dia de los Muertos, an altar been created to honor the Almo City. Stephen Cavasso is live at the Pearl this morning. Stephen, what makes this ofrenda so special? <laughs> Good morning, Max and Sarah. Well, after a difficult year with the pandemic, this uh, altar is actually uh, has this very special meaning. And with us this morning are two of the creators behind it, sisters Manola and Maria Ramirez of Lavaca Studios, two local artists here in the Alamo City. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. We first have to start off with how much work went into building this altar. Um, well, with everything that we've done, it took about a month to create everything because everything is handmade. But to install, we took three days. And yeah, this is the result. <laughs> you know, we're seeing so many of the traditional things that we would see in an altar. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're looking at over here? Steven is panning in and showing us a little bit uh, of what people can expect if they come out here. Um, we try to incorporate all the traditional elements. Uh, the carpeta is out here in the front, so it's also made from like the traditional um, sawdust. sawdust that is used in Mexico. So we try to keep everything as traditional as we could. All the flowers are Sampasuchil and the um, coxcomb, just so people could come and enjoy it and know that we tried to stay really true to the um, to the tradition. Absolutely beautiful. And when we talk about uh, the meaning behind this, after such a difficult year, why was it important for you all to to make this and bring this to life here at the Pearl? We wanted to have the community come out and have a, a space for their um, to come and remember their loved ones. So we want it to be sort of like a cathedral and a safe space for you to come sort of contemplate, remember all the good times, because it has been a very difficult year. And we also invite everyone to come and um, light a virtual candle. There are QR codes on either side of the altar. So everyone has a little bit of um, a, a little bit of something for their loved ones. You can also see all the names that have been added to the list and it's something special for all of us to like celebrate together. Well, we can't wait to, to get see more people coming out here and really appreciate this magnificent altar. We're going to have more coming up later this morning on GMSA. Max, Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. Well, last night was the Dia Los Muertos River Parade here in San Antonio, hosted by our KSAT team. It was full of color, culture, and celebrations. If you didn't get a chance to see it, don't worry. We have the entire event posted on our website for you to watch on demand. Just head over to Day of the Dead section on KSAT.com. It was so amazing, and it was so cool to see the behind the scenes. You got to see the great floats. You got to see some of our KSAT team members out and about. It was really just a spectacle. They really did a great job, and it was a sold-out event for the in-person seats. Boom. Mm -hmm. Love that. All right, KSAT.com. 808, 48 degrees now. Still ahead on GMSA. Actor Will Ferrell turns down millions of dollars for an Elf sequel. No. Details on why. <laughs> Plus, we're looking to the history and paranormal encounters happening at a hotel that is about an hour from San Antonio. Ooh. Spooky season? Spooky season. I'm not Beautiful. spooked about this weather. 48 degrees at 808. Sarah Spivey will have our spooky Halloween weekend forecast when we come back. Before we head to break, though, let's take a look at oh, some Halloween Oh, Charlie kids. Chaplin. I love this. We have Charlie Chaplin because, a quote, a day without laughter is a day wasted. Oh, look at that. And... There we go, a Gene Simmons fan. Wow. That is fantastic. Remember to keep sending your Halloween pictures in. We love to see them. You can post them right now on KSAT.com in the Halloween section under the Entertainment tab. We might post yours. Good morning and welcome back. A hotel that was once on a list for most endangered buildings in Texas. It sits less than an hour away from San Antonio. We were talking about the Magnolia Hotel right there in Seguin. I love this. It's jam-packed with history and people are known to have paranormal encounters there. Ooh. This Halloween season, GMSA producer Roslyn Jimenez has the latest episode of History Untold. It was built by the co-founder of Seguin and he was one of the original Texas Rangers. 
The Magnolia Hotel in Seguin holds a lot of history. It was originally built as a two-room log cabin in 1840 by James Campbell, a Texas Ranger who fought for the state's independence. The owners, Aaron and Jim Getty, saying over the years, the hotel expanded and was used in many different ways. It also became a stagecoach stop, and so when the stagecoach would arrive, the men would come on this side and the women on the other. So. It would remain a stagecoach stop for the next 50 years. Then in 1847, Aaron says three rooms were added to the original hotel, and eventually, it grew to a 10-room hotel on top with a tavern and restaurant on the bottom. And this was the tavern. And so the bar would have gone all along the side right here. And there's much more to this place than just history. Erin saying spirits of the people who pass through there still linger around. She says at times you can hear glasses clinking in the tavern, smell beer, and even hear spurs on the floor. But the Magnolia Hotel is more commonly known for the murder of 12-year-old Emma Vokler. She was struck in the head with a hatchet in the middle of the night in New Braunfels after a guest failed to rob a pharmacy and home there. After killing her, the man rode his horse back to Seguin and calmly crawled into bed, not confessing to the murder until he was dying. But despite this and many other incidents at the hotel, Jim says... Uh, you know? Nothing crazy. It's, yeah. it's a fun place. It's, uh, it's a good place to come relax. Yeah. Spend the weekend in Seguin, and uh, it's just a fun house to be in. Rosalyn Jimenez, KSAT 12 News. So here's the thing, guests can book a night there throughout the year and investigate on their own, as well as a guided tour during the day. If you just want to visit the hotel, there's going to be a free open house today, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I'm all about the paranormal. Are you? Do you do like ha haunted houses? No, haunted I don't houses? like to be scared. No, 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 haunted houses are different because okay. they're like jumping out at you. Okay. I'm not about that. You're just like the ghost stories. Yeah, I like the okay. ghost stories. I like swapping ghost stories like okay. oh one time I heard this oh no one time this happened to me or I saw this. So you just like the gossip. Uh, oh says, ghosts. I mean. It's not gossiping it's it's spooky stories. Oh okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right well we got really cold this morning in fact we got down to 46 degrees Sarah and Max so that my friends is the coldest we have been since drum roll please Brrr, take it away graphics the coldest we've been since March 24th. Whoa. Dang. Yes. 223 days, almost seven, actually more than seven months. Yeah, seven months and nine days to be exact. So more than seven months. And really impressive to get this cold. You know, our average morning low this time of year is 56. So we were 10 degrees cooler than that. And it's even in the 30s in some places around uh, the metro area. It's 39 at Bernie Stage Airfield. Up in the hill country, we've got 38 in Kerrville this morning. 47 in New Braunfels, 46 at JBSA Randolph. It's 50 degrees at Stenson and 44 down in Pleasanton. Yep, this is a future cast. It's a loop, but you can't really see anything because there's not going to be any clouds today. It's going to be a totally sunny day. We started off in the 40s and we'll top off right near 80 degrees. So an impressive 30 degree plus warm up there uh, during the day. 80s around San Antonio and across the hill country. Upper 80s though out in Del Rio, 88 for the forecast high, 86 in Eagle Pass and 87 in Carrizo Springs. One of the big things you'll notice that's different today from the last couple of days is that the winds are going to be light and variable uh, today rather than uh, from uh, the north gusting up to 25, 35 miles per hour. We're not going to have breezy conditions. Uh, we'll be looking at, here's the graphics for today. Day. That one I showed you was for a week ago, but here's the one that we're looking at for today. Again, light and variable winds. We're going to be sunny, 72 degrees around noon, so already warming up quickly uh, this afternoon and 80 for that high. Sun will set at 649 and it will be a bit chilly this evening. Temperatures will cool down into the upper 50s by midnight. So if you have a Saturday night a Halloween party plans, make sure to bring that light jacket with you. Now we are going to see humidity go up a little bit by the middle of the week. Dew points will be near 60 degrees. That's noticeable. That's muggy, but it's not oppressively humid and then they'll come down again uh, because we'll get a cold front. So let's talk about the weather pattern. The reason why our winds have uh, relaxed a bit is because this big potent upper level low is pushing off uh, to the east. In its wake, we're going to have fairly quiet weather until the middle of the week when this cold front will approach. This cold front is expected to move through Wednesday night or Thursday, and with it is going to come a potential for some storms, isolated to scattered showers and storms Wednesday night. And then instead of clearing out behind the front, what we're going to see is a fairly cloudy Thursday with scattered showers and temperatures will struggle to get out of the 60s on Thursday and on Friday. So that's definitely sweater weather. Uh, we're not going to be warming up all that much. 
Trick or treating tomorrow evening, sun sets at 648. It's going to be nice. We'll be looking at a high temperature right around 82, but as the kids head out to trick or treat, temperatures will dip into the 70s and by 8 p.m. we'll be in the 60s. So looking at the seven day forecast again, it's going to be warm uh, to this afternoon, but still very pleasant with the low humidity. A cool morning tomorrow, comfortable afternoon. Nice weather for trick or treating as that dancing mummy has shown you there That's on the us. seven day forecast. And then we'll be warming back up into the 80s with isolated storms Wednesday ahead of that front and scattered showers on Thursday. Those highs will only be in the 60s. Mm, mommy's doing the twist. He's excited. Let's do the twist. Mm. You have a Frankenstein one that does the running. Oh, I'll yeah. show that later. Yes. Oh, look at that tease. Love it. Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 818, 49 degrees out. Well, just ahead, the long wait for Ed Sheeran fans is over. Whoa. What the singer-songwriter says inspired his newest album. Plus, R. Kelly adding a high-profile attorney to his legal team, the popular celebrity she previously represented, and the latest on his federal case. In your morning spotlight, singer R. Kelly has added a lawyer to his team who previously represented Bill Cosby. That's right. So the singer adding a new attorney to help in the federal case in New York. Jennifer Bonjon, the newly hired attorney, requested an extension for the case until December 31st. That way they can file any post-trial motions for R. Kelly. Remember, Kelly convicted of racketeering and sex trafficking charges in September, currently being held at a federal detention center in Brooklyn, New York. Will Ferrell is revealing that he turned down a $29 million offer to star in a sequel to Elf. The 2003 mm. film is one of the most successful Christmas movies of all time. It grossed $220 million against a budget of $33 million. Mm. Ferrell says he turned down the money because he thinks the movie will not be good and it's something he can't honestly promote. Good for Just you. Just good for you. We don't need any bad sequels anymore. Nope. All right, Grammy award-winning singer, songwriter Ed Sheeran releasing his first new album in almost four years. It is called Equals. The album continues this trend of naming albums after mathematical symbols. I actually never knew that. Mm -hmm. Sheeran says the album was mostly inspired by his marriage, being in love, and fatherhood. He also lost a close friend while making it, so songs in the album cover, uh, themes of grief, love, and new life. You know, back to that Will Ferrell thing. I'm good for him. Yeah. Didn't do it for the money. The the elf elf is It's great. It's iconic. It's a great a great movie. I said this in the newsroom. It is good for him, but you also have to understand he probably has so much money if he's turning down twenty nine million dollars. He doesn't need that. That's fair. Eight twenty three, forty nine degrees out. Oh, is that fries inside a burger? What is that? Oh, well, um, David Elder will explain as he gives us a preview of today's episode, Texas Eats. This is a double, but this thing is absolutely loaded. Talk to me about what's going on. Uh, the chile con queso burger. So it has our refried black beans underneath it. Of course, the David special has two <laughs> patties, and then our chile, our signature chile con queso that we make, prepare in house, and it has the chips that add that, a lot of that texture. It was kind of bringing back that bean burger, right? <laughs> That's a burger. This is the bite. <laughs> I love it. I love it. This is the ultimate burger bite. <laughs> this is what you want. You want something cheesy. You want it to be acidic. You have the tomatoes in there. This is mm -hmm. over the top. I highly love recommend it. trying it. Ask for the one you saw on TV, the double. <laughs> and that's where it's at. I want to talk about this one in the front here. It's very colorful. That's our, our Oaxaqueño burger, right? And we wanted to, of course, incorporate, you know, kind of our culture into, into all of these burgers. Okay, go for it. Okay. What would that you do? Queso in the fries. Mm -hmm. There you go. All right, 828, about 48 degrees out. Ooh. Well, from victim to survivor coming up at GMSA at 830, our Case That Explains team breaks down this week's episode about domestic violence. And the family of the people killed in that drag racing crash in Kerrville continuing to fight for justice. We're going to explain the latest on a possible lawsuit. Good morning. Welcome back. Happy Halloween weekend, 831 this Saturday, October 30th. Last night, 
picture perfect, perfect. gorgeous perfect. Dia de los Muertos parade. We saw a bunch of people out and about. The parade was going on, the floats. It was awesome. It was a sold out event. Big shout out to Alicia Barrera, mm -hmm. our, our Steve Spreester. Yep. Um, all of our crew, behind the scenes crew, everyone oh. did a phenomenal job. Of course. All right, so people out and about this morning, Sarah Spivey, what can they expect? Guys, I don't know. Do you, do you feel something strange? Mm. I don't know. In the newsroom this morning? Oh. oh. <laughs> Ooh, my goodness. Whoa. <laughs> I guess I, that's my cue to give you the trick-or-treating forecast for tomorrow. We're only going to be in the 70s and the 60s in the evening hours tomorrow. So enjoy some of that time outdoors. It's going to be a great weekend all weekend long. Let's get that ghost out of here and take a look outside right now. Beautiful sunny skies to start our day. Low humidity and we are in the 40s, my friends. 48 degrees outside right now. Uh, 38 in uh, Kerrville. It's 47 in New Braunfels. Uh, 44 in Yavaldi and 54 in Rock Springs. So one of the coldest mornings we've had since March of this earlier this year and we're going to be warming up nicely to near 80 degrees this afternoon. So it is going to get a little bit on the warmer side this afternoon, but the humidity will stay low and also Winds today are going to be light and variable instead of the breezy conditions we've seen uh, the last few days. Sun's going to set at 649, so if you do have any uh, early Halloween plans this evening, know that you'll need that light jacket with you. We'll be back into the 60s. Now, coming up in the forecast, we've got a cold front in the forecast in this week. I'll have a look ahead in just a few minutes. Max and Sarah, back to you. Thank you, Sarah. Now to some continuing coverage. Police catch up with the hit and run suspect eight months after the crash. According to the affidavit, investigators learned that the suspect had several alcoholic drinks the night of the crash. Police began their search for 31 year old Gerardo Hinojosa Rueda in February after he ran away from the scene of the crash. They caught up with him this week. A passenger riding with him told officers the suspect had four to five beers and a half bottle of alcohol before hitting two vehicles that night. One of those vehicles had two children inside of it. That family was taken to the hospital for treatment. Meanwhile, lawyers preparing to file a lawsuit regarding that deadly drag race in Kerrville last weekend. Three people killed, two of which are family members. It's a story we've been following very closely. An out-of-control car left track hitting several people, including 8-year-old Santiago Martinez and his aunt, 46-year-old Rebecca Cedillo, both dying from those injuries. My clients that uh, uh, Ms. Cedillo and, and Santiago had stepped down from the trailer and that they were proceeding to the concession area exactly at the moment when uh, the Ford Mustang lost control. Kerrville police have not yet filed any charges, but earlier this week they said there were no criminal components to the investigation at that point. However, family attorneys believe someone should be held responsible. They hope to file a lawsuit in the next week or so. There is a long list of possible defendants in the case. They include the event organizer, Flying Diesel, the city of Kerrville, Kerr County, the insurance company, event vendors, the driver of the Mustang, and possibly even the owner of the Mustang. Well, a new episode of KSAT Explains is now out. And this week, the team tackling a tough subject, the topic of protective orders, a court order domestic violence victims can apply for to keep their abusers away. KSAT executive producer Brina Monterosa steps into the breakdown booth to talk about what she learned while working on this episode. Domestic violence is something that can affect anyone. And we often think it's not something that can hit close to home, but it can. So when we decided to do this episode, we wanted to focus on protective orders, a tool that's used for domestic violence victims or anyone on the receiving end of threatening behavior. So it's a complex process, it's a legal process, and, and sometimes it can take time. What I learned through the Bear County Family Justice Center is just how dedicated that center is. The people working there are there to help you, to try to get you out of that abusive relationship. They offer legal services, like I said, protective orders, or they offer a food pantry, clothing, counseling, all crucial things that people who haven't experienced domestic violence don't know um, are necessary. And so this was truly an eye-opening episode about, uh, you know, a unique center here in San Antonio and Bear County. Hearing from both 
uh, survivors and those people who are working with them, they're both going through emotions. They're both trying to, again, in the end, get out of an abusive situation. The stories you'll hear from these survivors are raw and you'll get to see and hear just how much they have to fight to get their life back and anything that you can do to have compassion, to help, um, will go a long way for these survivors. KSAT Explains from Victim to Survivor is available on streaming demand right now on ksat.com slash explains or on the KSAT TV app available on Roku, Fire Stick, and most other streaming devices. In morning headlines, it will be illegal to chain up dogs outdoors in Texas next year with most change. The law takes effect January 18th. Owners are also not allowed to leave a dog without adequate shelter, shade, from direct, to, from direct sunlight, drinking water, and an area that allows the animal to avoid standing water and exposure to excessive animal waste. Now, there are technicalities, and we explain all of it in the article right now on KSAT.com. A National Archives court filing shows former President Donald Trump is trying to keep hundreds of files from the House. A sworn declaration explains Trump wants to keep 700 pages from the files of his close advisors up to and on January 6th, a secret. In those files are handwritten notes about the events that took place on January 6th, a draft speech, among other things related to the 2020 election and the attack on the Capitol. He's also trying to keep secret 30 pages of his daily schedule, White House visitor logs and call records. The archive said it plans to begin releasing disputed Trump era records to the House beginning on November 12th, unless a court intervenes. A hearing on Trump's lawsuit will be on November 4th. A newly declassified United States intelligence report offering new details about how agencies assess the origin of COVID-19. The 17-page document says the investigation is inconclusive. Four agencies surmise with low confidence that the virus jumped from animals to humans. One suggests with moderate confidence it may have come from a lab. Now, sources say the lone agency is the FBI. However, officials haven't confirmed that. The report went on to say the origin of COVID-19 is likely to remain a mystery. Well, Dia de los Muertos is a time of remembrance, and here in the Alamo City, two local artists have created a place where people can honor their loved ones. That's right. Stephen Cavazza has joined us live from the Pearl this morning, showing us how this work of art pays tribute to the community. Good morning, Max and Sarah. Well, first we want to say that the Pearl does commission artists each year to uh, construct these beautiful altars here at this popular attraction spot. This year we have sisters and uh, local artists from Lavaca Studios, Manola and Maria Ramirez. This is a beautiful piece of work of art that we're seeing behind us. So much detail went into it. Tell us a little bit more about what we're seeing this morning. Um, so today we have the altar here and we went with the traditional um, three-tiered altar where we try to incorporate all of the elements that you see in every traditional ofrenda. So we have the food incorporated, the salt, the water, everything that goes into um, this special um, uh, tradition. And the, oh, we also have Katrinas that were made from, they were made by a local artist, uh, Regina Moya. She was uh, very kind to lend, us, lend them out to us. So they also add that special touch to the ofrenda. You know, and really quick here before we wrap, uh, anyone that wants to light a candle in honor of their loved one, the best way to do that is virtually. How so? We have a QR code here available for everyone to come and scan, but there is also going to be a link um, on the website at the Pearl. And so there's a QR code here for whenever you guys come and visit, you are welcomed to come and light a candle for your loved one. Well, it will be here till November 7th, and we want to thank you all for joining us this morning. We're going to have more coming up on GMSA at 9. Max, Sarah? All right, Stephen Cavazos, thank you so much. 841, 50 degrees out. Well, just ahead on GMSA, Uber oh. riders have a chance to get a unique ride this season where you'll find vehicles like the Scooby-Doo Mystery Machine and others. Plus, a couple big fall events happening today right here in San Antonio. We have the details, what you need to know next. Oh, Gord. Okay. <laughs> they didn't really think that was funny. All right, 50 <laughs> degrees, 841. It's beautiful outside. Get If you're up, go outside. It's beautiful. Sarah Spivey will have our full forecast when we come back.
The blood supply in and around San Antonio remains low. That's why there is a blood drive event happening today, but that's not all. That's right. There's a lot going on. West Care's monthly community is also hosting a drive through resource fair and a unique pumpkin patch. Yeah, it's all in one. So at the October resource fair happening today at the Ella Austin Community Center, if you need to know where that is, it's on your screen. 1023 North Pine, starting from 10 a.m., goes till 3 p.m. The South Texas Blood and Tissue Center's mobile unit team will be on site taking blood donations. There's also going to be kidney health screenings, flu shots, COVID vaccines, and boosters. As families arrive, children will also be able to participate in Halloween fun. They get to take pictures, even get a free pumpkin. Oh, all about that free pumpkin. Mm -hmm. I'm carving pumpkins today. I'm excited. Okay. There, I feel like that's a missed opportunity mm. with the blood donation. I want to donate blood. Well done. Halloween. Well done. <laughs> Got a new spokesperson here. I'm trying here. It, okay. You're bringing the Halloween activity. I love it. Yeah. All right. Let's go ahead and take a look outside. Sunny skies, and we are seeing temperatures rise. We, however, started off at 46 degrees. South 48 at the airport, but the temperature is rising. Winds are fairly light and variable at the moment, currently from the west northwest at about five miles per hour. 45 at Bernie Stage Airfield. It's 41, though, up in Comfort, and Kerrville actually dipped down into the 30s this morning. Bernie Sage Airfield was at 39, 46 in Rio Medina, 50 at Stinson, and 47 in New Braunfels. As Sarah was talking about earlier, it is beautiful out there. If you can get an opportunity to walk around this morning outside, take it because it feels great outside. 46 in Yavaldi, 47 in Kennedy, and for our friends out in Gonzales, it's 48 degrees this morning. Now, one big difference for the weather this weekend as compared to the last couple of days is that big upper level low that was and surface low that was bringing those windy conditions has pushed on off to the east. So this weekend is not going to be as windy as the last few days. In fact, today the winds should stay light and variable, gradually changing direction throughout the day. Then to our north, there's a cold front that's going to be moving through San Antonio later on this week. And it'll bring some welcome changes to the forecast as well, too. But first, let's enjoy this weekend. Today is going to be a beautiful day outside. We will, however, be warming up really quickly. Uh, now, usually this uh, little bug at the bottom of your screen here in the morning hours updates quicker than our graphics. So currently it says 51. So we're already warming up. By 10, we'll be at 60 degrees, 80 for that afternoon high. And sun will set around 649 tonight. So I know that there are still some Halloween plans tonight, even though Halloween is tomorrow. So if you have plans, maybe a Halloween party, just know that that light jacket would be a good idea because temperatures will dip down to near 58 by midnight. Now it is nice and dry outside. Dew points are in the 30s and they're going to stay that way throughout the day. Tomorrow, dew points will actually rise by about 10 to 20 degrees, but the humidity is not really going to be noticeable until it gets above 60 degrees and it'll do that by Monday and eventually on Tuesday. Before it can get though oppressively humid with dew points back in the 70s, we're going to get another cold front that'll move through. This one is going to move through Wednesday into Thursday, bringing with it a few storms uh, isolated to scattered showers and storms Wednesday and Wednesday night. And then throughout the day on Thursday, our temperatures will be dropping. We'll stay fairly cloudy and we'll have scattered showers. So because of that, Thursday, our highs will only be in the 60s. It's going to be one of the coolest days so far this season. All right, trick or treating tomorrow night. It is going to be really nice outside for the kids. All treats tomorrow night with temperatures in the 70s with low humidity and the sun is going to set around uh, 648. So we'll have an afternoon high right around 82, but as the sun sets, temperatures will dip down into the 70s. It's going to be a nice uh, day tomorrow just in general, and then we'll be noticeably more muggy Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday before that front arrives with the showers and storms in the forecast Wednesday and Thursday. And our highs will only be in the 60s. That's sweater weather, my friends, by the end sweater of the weather. Day. Yep. I haven't worn a sweater yet. I'm really excited. There you go. 849, 51 degrees out. Well, coming up after the break, NASA releases a cool new 3D image of Jupiter. The recent changes scientists say they have noticed. Step on up.
Hi. So in your consumer news, NASA releasing a three-dimensional view of Jupiter's atmosphere. It was taken from the Juno mission, which has been circling the gas giant since 2016. In the latest discovery, scientists learned Jupiter's great red spot is much deeper than they originally thought. The storm is between 124 to 311 miles deep. That's about as deep within Jupiter as the International Space Station is above our heads. Oh. Scientists have also learned that the storm is getting smaller. All right, here we go. Big news for the electrical vehicle market. Toyota adding a new electric SUV to the lineup. So it's called the BZ4X. There you go. It features, get this, an optional solar roof. So along with steering, similar to the one in the latest version of the Tesla Model S, the Toyota SUV was first revealed at the Shanghai Auto Show earlier this year. The BZ4X expected to be available in Japan in mid-2022. Unclear when or if it'll be available here in the United States. Pricing not even available yet, but we are expected to learn the price in the coming months. Uber riders in three cities may get surprised by some stylish Halloween rides this weekend. Customers who request an Uber X in Atlanta, Los Angeles, and Miami could find ah. themselves being picked up in some amazing rides. My favorite right here, the Scooby-Doo Mystery Machine, the SpongeBob SquarePants Patty Wagon. Okay. There it is. There it is. There it is, the Krabby Patty. And the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Party Wagon. Whoa. It's just for fun and the vehicles function as normal Uber is. rides. Uber uh, taking customers where they need to go. Okay, so your favorite, the Scooby-Doo machine? Obviously, because my dog name is Scooby. There you go, mm -hmm. interesting. All right, 8.54, 51 degrees now. Well, getting ready for the holiday season after the break, when you can check out millions of lights and sculptures in Marble Falls. All right, so Halloween happening tomorrow, but don't worry, people are already getting ready for the Christmas no, season. That is no, crazy no. to me. Oh, pump the brakes. Anyways, but this is cool. Including Marble Falls with their annual walkway of lights. Starting mm. on November 19th, Lakeside Park will be illuminated by 2 million lights that cover more than 350 sculptures. The best part, it's free. So you can, you can read more about this right now on KSAT.com. When do you put up the Christmas lights? After Thanksgiving. Okay. There you can keep the gourds and pumpkins out mm. through Thanksgiving since so fall. It's okay. all festive. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Time now, 857, 51 degrees out. Still ahead on GMSA at 9, the crew of the International Space Station will have to wait a little bit longer for some relief. Why the SpaceX mission scheduled for tomorrow oh. has been delayed. Plus, Honoring the lives of San Antonio. Coming up this morning, we are live at the Pearl where a special altar has been created as a symbol of remembrance. Well, if you were in the downtown area overnight, you may have heard some explosion. We have the latest on the incidents that scared a lot of people right near Travis Park. Plus, police searching for a driver that hit and killed a man on the northwest side. Details on who they are looking for. That's coming up. And a chilly start to the morning. Sweater weather to start your Halloween weekend. 51 degrees now. What is the rest of the day? What does trick-or-treating look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. Until then... Good morning, 9 o'clock this Saturday, October 30th. Thank you so much for joining us, starting your morning with us. Are you ready for Halloween? I am ready. If adults could still trick-or-treat, I would. I live to give out candy now. What age did you stop trick-or-treating? Uh, I think it was kind of when the party started. You like It's a natural progression from trick-or-treating to the Halloween parties to I'm too old for this. I trick-or-treated until I was a senior in high school. No shame. Oh Sarah Spivey, what's the line of demarcation for you? I think, you know, if, if teenagers grade. want, I think eighth grade. Eighth grade, okay, that's good. I but I'm teenagers. not going to judge people no. if they are. The judgment free zone. Wouldn't you rather them be like going trick or treating for wholesome good fun? 18 year old, 17 year old. That has nothing. That's not what I'm talking. <laughs> How's the about. weather look out there? Yeah, so it, you know we had some really cold weather this morning. In fact, temperatures got down to the coldest they've been in a while. We were at 46 this morning in San Antonio, 39 at Bernie Stage Airfield. It was 38 in Kerrville, and a wider view here. It got down to 49 in Del Rio and 41 in Creasy Springs. But we are already warming up really significantly. In fact, it's it's 52 degrees outside right now, uh, and winds are actually light. You know, the last few days we've had to contend with a bit of a breeze.
areas. Uh, but that is not going to be the case today. Today we'll have light and variable wind conditions and total sunshine. It is going to be a beautiful Saturday. We'll be warming up to 80 degrees this afternoon with low humidity. And tonight I know there are some of those Halloween parties that Max was talking about. So if you're going to be going out tonight, just know it will be a bit chilly by 10 uh, to midnight with temperatures will be dipping down into the 50s. All in all, though, a beautiful irresistible weekend. I'll have a look ahead to your trick or treat forecast coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, people around the Travis Park area startled by loud explosions overnight. Police say several underground explosions rocked the area and stretched for several blocks. It started just after midnight near the intersection of Jefferson and Martin Streets. People staying at the St. Anthony Hotel were evacuated for a while, but no one was hurt. CPS crews were out in the area for several hours restoring power. It's unclear what caused those explosions. Also new this morning, a man dead and right now police searching for the driver who hit and killed him. Here's what we know right now. Investigators say around 9 o'clock last night, a man was hit while crossing Fredericksburg Road just north of Vance Jackson. He was hit by a white minivan. The driver did not stop, did not try and render aid. Now, witnesses stayed on the scene, gave police their statements. What they saw right now, the man's identity has not yet been released. Police still searching for the driver of that minivan. Well, the chairman emeritus of Broadway Bank, Charles E. Cheever Jr., has passed away at the age of 93. Charlie was the son of the bank's founders, and three of his children are involved in the bank's business. He joined the bank to work with his father after serving in the U.S. Air Force, and just four years later, he became the president of the company. Broadway Bank is the largest privately owned bank that is headquartered right here in San Antonio and the second largest family owned bank in Texas. Visitation and funeral arrangements are still pending. In your morning headlines, 19 states, including Texas, now suing to block President Biden's COVID vaccine mandate for federal contractors. Several states filing lawsuits together, but actually Texas sued individually yesterday. The lawsuits argue that Biden's administration overstepped its authority, requiring federal contractors to make their employees get the vaccine. The president arguing that sweeping vaccine mandates have actually helped end the deadly pandemic. More than five weeks after it erupted, a volcano on the Spanish Canary Island of La Palma continues to spew lava. Flows of molten rock have prompted the evacuation of about 7,500 people and destroyed more than 20 hundred buildings, mostly homes. The lava covers over 2,000 acres of mainly farmland. Scientists monitor, monitoring the eruption have seen no indication that it is weakening and rivers of lava continue to flow slowly towards the sea. Well, happening today, a work of art honoring the lives of those in the Alamo City, a community altar now on display right now throughout the weekend at the Pearl. That's where we find our Stephen Cavassels live this morning. Stephen, how did this altar come to life? Well, it took quite a while, Max and Sarah. Just take a look at this beautiful work of art right behind me, but also a place of remembrance. Uh, we just talked to the two local artists behind this beautiful altar here at the Pearl. It took a total really of three days to construct, but all of what you're seeing right now is handcrafted, and it really has traditional elements of a uh, ofrenda is what it's called, and you see the marigolds, and you also see the catrinas as well. This has definitely been a project, a passion project for these two local artists. Now, keep in mind, this is going to be here in until November 7th. Now, those two local artists that we did just speak to uh, did tell us that they are urging or encouraging the community who wants to be a part of this. If you want to light a candle, the best way you can do that is virtually. Let's take a look right over here. You may see that there is some QR codes right at this sign. You can scan your phone right there or on the Pearl's website and take a look at how many people have done that already. We brought this up on my phone. There are countless candles already out there remembering the lives of the Alamo City and those who have uh, lost their lives. So obviously, this is a place the community can come together to remember their loved ones. It will be uh, open to the public up until November 7th, but we've already been seeing a lot of people coming out here taking photos and taking pictures, but more importantly, remembering their loved ones. Max, Sarah? That is Thank so you, Steven. cool how they incorporate the phone with everything. And I love that it's at the Pearl, so you can just kind of walk by, see it whenever you're going out to eat or walking the dog. It's cool and today, sight. Today's a perfect day to do it, too. Mm -hmm. Time now, 906, 52 degrees now. Still ahead on GMSA. Oh, look at this. Wait for it. Boom. Bang. Beautiful. Still ahead highlights from our big game and big game coverage and a look at tonight's high school games. And coming up next, we'll take a little trip to Mexico City where they are ready for the Day of the Dead celebrations.
fantastic. But here at home, we're gonna take a look at some Halloween picks. Janessa from Carrizo Springs. Oh, wait for it. What did she, what she dress She up? wanted to be her mom for Aww, Halloween. Oh, that is fantastic. She's got Alexa, feed my kids. That shirt is amazing. She's got her coffee, baby, groceries. Moms do it all. Moms are pretty much amazing. Great costume. And next up. A little hunter. Oh, his yep. name is his Hunter. His name is Hunter, but he's a vampire. He's also a vampire, so oh. he's also a hunter. Oh, okay. Super cute. Keep sending in your Halloween pics. We love to see them. You can post them right now on KSAT.com in our Halloween section that's under the Entertainment tab. Welcome back. The streets of Mexico City decorated for Day of the Dead celebrations. Volunteers and city workers weaved purple and orange flowers decorate stalls and pathways across the center of the city. It's beautiful out there. Oh my gosh, it's so beautiful. Sculptures of colorful skeletons and skulls will remain in place the first couple of nights of November. The Day of the Dead celebrations begin tomorrow night and end on Tuesday. All right, well back here at home, we had our Day of the Dead parade last night. Big shout out to everyone involved behind the scenes and of course, Case at town on camera. We had Steve Spreeser, Lisa Brera, and it was awesome. It was beautiful weather too, and that weather continues. 53 degrees at 9:11 this morning. Ah. Will trick or treaters have Ooh. a nice treat for weather? They will. It'll be all treats. Okay, nothing spooky about this weekend's forecast by any means. Although I will say we did break, uh, well, we didn't break a record, but we were cold, the, the coldest we've been in a long time. 46 degrees this morning, the coolest temperature in San Antonio measured at the airport since March 21st. That's 223 days, more than seven months. And I don't know about you, but I welcome the change to cooler mornings. It got down into the 30s though up in the hill country. Right now though, it's 42 in Kerrville, 44 in Comfort, 50 in Canyon Lake, 52 in Rio Medina. And in just a little bit more than an hour of sunlight, we've already seen temperatures rise by six degrees, 52 right now at the airport. So that's a great indication that because we're gonna have ample sunshine, and low humidity, we're going to warm up really nicely today. By the later hours in the afternoon, we'll be at 80 degrees for the high temperature in San Antonio and uh, closer to 79 up in Rock Springs and Kerrville. So it is going to be a beautiful day today. The upper 80s, though, likely out in Del Rio, 87 for the high, 87 in Carrizo Springs and 89 in Laredo. But it's still going to feel nice out there with the low humidity. One big thing that you'll notice that's going to be different is that the winds are not going to be an issue today. We'll have light and variable winds out there with the direction changing every now and then. Uh, and it's going to be a really nice day. 60 at 10, 72 at noon. So we'll already be about 25 degrees warmer than how we started the day by noon and then 80 for the high temperature today. Sun will set at 649. There are going to be some activities going on tonight for Halloween. And so if you have plans, just know that you'll need to take a jacket with you. It's going to be a bit chilly by the evening hours. We'll be getting down into the 50s by midnight. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that we're going to still enjoy low humidity tomorrow for Halloween itself. By Monday through Wednesday, our humidity will, will be right at the threshold of you, you can feel it. All right, so once those dew points get to about 60 degrees, that's when you can feel the humidity in the air. Our morning lows will not be as cool with the increase in the humidity. And the reason why we're seeing calmer wind conditions today is because the uh, surface low that was really strong and bringing gusty winds has moved on off to the east. In its wake, a cold front is working its way across the central plains, and this is going to take its time getting to us. It'll move through San Antonio by Wednesday night, Thursday morning, and at that time, some showers and storms are going to be possible as that front moves through. And then instead of clearing out and seeing clear skies after the front, we're actually going to see cloudier conditions and even some scattered showers on Thursday itself behind the front. That means our high temperatures on Thursday and on Friday are likely going to be in the 60s. So that is pretty cool. That's definitely sweater weather and a lot cooler than seasonably average. We usually see a high temperature in the 70s this time of year. And instead by Thursday and Friday, we'll be in the 60s. Tomorrow is Halloween. If you're planning on taking your kids trick or treating, sun sets at 648. We're going to have uh, 
have sunny skies tomorrow, 82 for the high, but as soon as that sun sets, our temperatures will dip into the 70s and we'll be in the 60s by 8 and by 10 p.m. Looking at that seven day forecast, summarizing everything I've said so far, warm for the first part of the week, 80s, and then that front will arrive Wednesday into Thursday, bringing a chance for showers and storms and cooling us down. Max and Sarah. I'll take another front. All right, Sarah Spivey, thank you so much. 915, 53 degrees out. Oh, so upset about the Astros. Uh, not the best night, but don't worry. Another chance to come back tonight. We're going to have the highlights from Game 3 of the World Series. Take a look at the lot of numbers. Pick 3, 6, 2, 7, Fireball 1, Daily 4, 1, 8, 0, 6, Fireball 8. All right, next up we have your Cash 5, 4, 6, 7, 19, 35, and then here we go. Wait for it. Mega Millions, 15, 26, 28, 35, 45. Big number four, Mega Pyre three. Good luck. We'll be right back. Astro fans, don't worry. Got another chance tonight. The Braves taking a 2 1 lead last night in the World Series, shutting out the Astros 2 0. The Braves took a no hit bid into the eighth inning, the second longest no hit bid in the World Series since 1956. Houston not coming close to a hit until pinch hitter Diaz bloop, bloop, a leadoff single in the eighth on a ball that looked catchable. Now, the Astros big stars, Jose Altuve, Carlos Correa, and Alex Bregman, well, they were surrounded by not so happy Atlanta fans. They chanted cheater all night long. Here we go, though. Astros hoping to bounce back tonight. Game four of the World Series set for 7 p.m. in Atlanta. All right, high school football. Last night, the big game in our big game coverage. Who's going to take District 28-6A? And look at this, Johnson Reagan opening up with a beautiful touchdown. 88 getting seven down to the wire under a minute. They were down eight. They had the goal line. And we, we saw it right there. And a couple trick plays later, backcourt of the end zone. We had a touchdown and then wait for it. Number 13, all the jukes. Does he get in? Whew. Wait for it. There we go. All right. Into the end zone, sending the game into overtime, tied at 43. The game winner, though, here we go. Wait for it. Oof. Juke left and right. Sarah, this is your favorite play of the day. It is. That is just impressive. That's my Achilles. Right. <laughs> Breaks the plane. But at the end, it went to OT. 42 yard field goal. Johnson survives and thrives 46 to 43. Wow. Here's a look at other scores from last night. Marshall Winnipeg 45-17. Brandeis, a barn burner 30 over Churchill, who had 22. And then the highlights we showed you. Johnson 46, Reagan 43, Madison 52, Lee 14. Don't worry. If you want to watch more high school football, we got a lot continuing today. Two afternoon games and then three night games. Ooh, week 10, a lot going on. So don't worry. If you can't watch the games, if you have plans, if you're setting up for Halloween, we're going to have all the highlights tonight and, of course, tomorrow on GMSA. Speaking of GMSA tomorrow, we're going to have Spurs highlights because they are back in action tonight. They are taking on the reigning champs, Milwaukee Bucks, this time in Milwaukee, looking like a revenge game for the Spurs. Tip-off set for 7 p.m., so hopefully they can slow down Giannis Antetokounmpo, get their second win of the season. Go Spurs, go. Go Spurs, go. 921, 53 degrees out. The crew on the International Space Station will have to wait a little bit longer for some relief coming up next. Why the SpaceX mission scheduled for tomorrow has been delayed. Ooh, do you do jack o -Lantern? Yes, I'm making one tonight. Oh, okay. Here's a look at some of the Halloween picks the viewers sent in. That's a good one. You that's know, impressive. That's some detailed, like, flame teeth carving oh, right yeah. there. It's a I, lot of work. I got to give a shout out to uh, Justin. Justin Horn posted on his Facebook. They carved some pumpkins. Really impressive. This one's impressive, too. It kind of looks like a ghost with a witch hat on. Super cute. Keep posting your Halloween pics. We'd love to see them. You can post them on ksat.com. So I'm gonna put some lime on it because when you got lime, you gotta use it, right? Yeah. All on top. That looks crazy good. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Oh my goodness. Mm. That is incredible. Mm -hmm. Give me some elbow love. Bam! The crickets are fun because it just kind of adds that element of surprise to the dish, mm -hmm. but they're really just a crunchy texture yeah. on there. 
All the seasoning that's on the meat seared really nicely as well. You have that creaminess coming off the guacamole. I mean, and the little crunch on the tortillas is exactly what you want as well. It's a great vehicle for all the flavors. I like the cucumber on there. Yeah, that's it's a like really fresh, nice freshness. Yeah. That is a great bite. This next one, though, is a little bit more for what you're known for, the black trompo, right? Black pastor. So the, this dish is, uh, is made of uh, pork back and pork shoulder, and it's marinated in recado negro and five spice, Asian spice. Looks good, and David Elder will hopefully be here within the next, the mm. end of the half hour. Yeah, I'm, excited. I'm very excited. I'm hungry. I know you are. <laughs> All right, tomorrow's SpaceX crew Dragon launch has been delayed by at least three days due to weather. NASA made the announcement today saying the delay was due to a large storm system. That's right, it's elevating winds and waves in the Atlantic Ocean along the Crew Dragon's flight path. So mission managers say they need favorable weather across part of the Atlantic seaboard in case the launch has to be aborted and an ocean splashdown is necessary. The flight now tentatively scheduled for Wednesday evening. So the purpose of this mission is for the four astronauts to go to the International Space Station to relieve the four person crew that's been there mm. for six months. So I think this was more of like a, for the people waiting, like, oh, three more yeah. days. That's all right, they made it this long. They could do another three days. 927, <laughs> 55 degrees out. There's still much more to come on GMSA, including a look at what's next when it comes to younger children being able to receive that COVID-19 vaccine. And after nearly three years on the run, police making an arrest in connection to a deadly shooting. We have the details after the break. Good morning, welcome back, and happy Saturday, 9.30 this morning, October 30th. So you know what tomorrow is? Halloween! I'm so excited. I can tell. Are you going to be handing out candy? Yes. You are? I, I think the plan is that my girlfriend and I are going to go to our friend's house. They're handing out candy. It's the first time I'm handing out candy, so it's a big day. That's a big day for you, uh, Matt. No, what about you? Handing out candy? Yes, handing out candy. Going to my old neighbor's house, neighbor John. Uh -huh. Handing out candy. They have a lot of kids in that neighborhood. Mm. and. I try to hand out candy, mm -hmm. um, but I've just, I'm really sad. I've discovered my, my I have a, a middle street. No one yeah. wants to trick or treat on the middle street. That's Everyone funny. goes on the outside street. Mm. Sarah Spivey, what about you? Handing out candy? Yeah, and I'll head out and hang out with some of my friends who have little kids. So I'm excited about that. Now, I've been feeling a little eeriness around the weather center all morning long, and, and that's why there's a little visitor there. So. Hi, how you doing? Okay, so uh, trick-or-treating is going to be nice for the kids, though. Temperatures will be in the 70s and later in the evening in the 60s. So pretty nice outside with low humidity. All treats in the trick-or-treating forecast. And you know what? We've got some good news, too, in the pollen count. Molds have fallen. They're low at 280. Juniper and ragweed are low as well. Uh, that juniper is a little interesting because, as you know, mountain cedar season is just right around around the corner. So we'll continue to keep you updated right now. It's sunny. You can see the plane flying there off in the distance, but it's 52 sunny degrees out there because uh, we've been able to see tons of sunshine since this morning and we woke up in the 40s and now we're in the 50s. So we're on our way to warm back up. It's still in the 40s, though, up in Kerrville, 45 degrees. Today's forecast calls for gorgeous weather, 72 at noon and 80 for the afternoon high light and variable winds. So a bit of a different weather pattern there than the last few days when we've had breezy conditions. But we've got another cold front on the way. I'll have a look at that forecast coming up in just a bit. Max and Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. New this morning, we're getting a firsthand look at the man arrested for shooting and killing a man, a taxi cab driver. The man was shot and killed as an own taxi cab two years ago. Baldemar Hinojosa Jr. taken into custody just last night. Nearly two years after the murder, he's been charged with capital murder. Police say Hinojosa had been on the run since January of 2019. The motive behind the shooting, still unclear. Here's what we know right now, though. Back in 2019, police were actually called out to this parking lot. It was a parking lot of a Texas thrift store just off I-35 near 410 in Windcrest. They were called there for a shooting, and when officers arrived, they found the taxi cab driver shot dead in the driver's seat. Now to the latest in the pandemic and a big step towards vaccinating younger children. The FDA authorizing the Pfizer vaccine for kids ages 5 to 11, but they can't get those shots quite yet. ABC's Janae Norman explains what's coming up next. For the first time, 15 million doses of Pfizer's COVID vaccine for young kids shipping out this morning, following FDA authorization of the vaccine for children ages 5 to 11. Our actions today, plus uh, CDC's recommendations next week, 
help us get closer to hopefully closing another chapter in this pandemic. And ahead of a possible winter surge, 28 million children could be eligible to get the shot as soon as Wednesday, the day after the CDC director is expected to sign off. State and local officials getting a jump on ordering those doses. Now en route to medical centers, doctor's offices, pharmacies, community centers, and mass vaccination sites. The Texas Children's Hospital already opening up appointments. Since the start of the pandemic, some 6 million children have been diagnosed with COVID-19. An estimated 700 children and teens under age 18 have died. One third of the children who are hospitalized or otherwise healthy uh, before that hospitalization. So we can't predict ahead of time who's at risk. Data showing the Pfizer vaccine to be 91% effective in young children with no reports of serious safety concerns. That's leaving some parents eager to get their kids immunized. Being able to get that vaccine is going to give us a little bit of peace of mind. But research showing parents overwhelmingly hesitant. Scared. We're scared, we're nervous. A Kaiser Family Foundation poll finding just 27% of parents say they would get their children vaccinated right away, while another 33% say they would want to wait and see. Some parents also expressing concerns about the dosage for children ages 5 to 11. It's one third the size of the dose for kids ages 12 and older. They all had the same uh, level of uh, immune response, so you don't need to worry that your 11-year-old is going to be underdosed. That was Nate Norman reporting. All right, well, back here at home, a popular San Antonio attraction transformed into a place of worship. It's really beautiful. Two local artists have built an altar at the Pearl to honor the lives of San Antonio for Dia Los Huertos. Stephen Cavazos is live there this morning and shows how this beautiful work of art is bringing the community together. Good morning, Max and Sarah. Well, it's definitely a time of remembrance and reflection. And since the time we've been here at the Pearl, that's exactly what we've been seeing. Many community uh, members have been stopping by here, taking pictures of this beautiful altar or ofrenda right behind me uh, that's dedicated to the community. Now, this is an annual tradition for the Pearl. They actually commission artists each year to put this together. And this all has the traditional elements of marigold, papel picados, and it's all been handcrafted. It took about a month to complete in three days to put together. Now, this year, they brought together two local artists that are also sisters, Manola and Maria Ramirez of La Vaca Studios. Again, they tell us that this is all handcrafted. Now, Manola Ramirez, again, one of the artists, uh, tells us that this has been a passion project for her and her sister, and she encourages people to take part in this tradition. Take a look. I think it's such a special tradition to take time and intentionally remember someone who's passed away just because it also brings some healing to you and as well as happiness and joy to sort of be with them again. Now, while you are encouraged to come by, take pictures, and uh, really take this all in in person, instead of bringing candles or offerings like you would to the typical ofrenda, what instead you're being asked to do is just grab your phone and scan that QR code right there. That'll take you to a website where you can actually light a candle for your loved one digitally. And we've already been seeing a lot of candles that have been lit so far. Now, keep in mind, this is going to be here at the Pearl up until November 7th, so there's plenty of time to come out and remember your loved one. Reporting live from the Pearl this morning, Stephen Cavazos, KSAT 12 News. Max, Sarah, back to you. All right. Thank you, Stephen. Well, a busy Halloween weekend, and there are tons of activities, like going to the Pearl, checking out everything over there. So you head to KSAT.com, click on the Halloween section right under the Entertainment tab. We have a whole list of events happening today and tomorrow. What do you have planned? Uh, part cut, uh, what is it called? Carving pumpkins. Okay. Um, that's for tonight. Okay. And then handing out candy tomorrow. You got to post your pictures. Oh, uh, 100%. .com. I will. All right, time now, 937, 56 degrees out. Well, coming up next, I'll show you how TechStot is cracking down on littering with a new app. Don't be a litterer. Mm -mm. You can report them, too. Mm -hmm. All right, taking a live look out of the Alamo City. We've seen temps kind of jump up in just the last hour. 56 right now. What is the rest of the day? What does your Halloween weekend look like? We're going to check in with Sarah Spivey in just a bit. KSAT 12 presents another Day of the Dead story, brought to you by Toyota. The German influence in Central and South Texas is undeniable. It's in our food, it's in our music, and during Oktoberfest, it's a heritage that's celebrated. But there was a time when being German-American was a bit more complicated. 
you wouldn't yeah. really yeah. hear about this. Before coming into this class, I had no idea about this issue whatsoever. Now, some history students from St. Mary's are using a Day of the Dead tradition to confront a topic that's in danger of being forgotten. We're working on a friend us, commemorating all those, all those people that had to go through the internment camps. During World War II, thousands of Americans and Latin Americans of German descent were interned by the U.S. government. It's an injustice that's never been fully recognized, and one of those camps was right here in Texas. Eric Gehrman's family experienced it firsthand. He was only five years old. The United States, and they uh, took us. They picked up more, more Costa Ricans than any other country. Built at the Beethoven Manicor in time for Oktoberfest, this ofrenda not only keeps the story of America's German internment alive, it raises questions about how we treat people as a country, both then and now. Lori reminded me a lot of how the current border crisis is going, in which there's children behind barbed wires being away from their parents. We need to tell these stories in order to acknowledge that that is who we are, and because we need to acknowledge who we are before we can change who we are. Have you ever been driving on Texas roads and seen someone toss a cigarette or a piece of trash out their window? Well, a new app allows you to tattle on them. I spoke with the Texas Department of Transportation about its Don't Mess With Texas app and how they responded to Texan litter bugs. We've all seen it. Cigarette butts, gum wrappers, soda and beer cans and food containers on our 80,720 miles of Texas roadways. Here are about 362 million pieces of trash accumulate on Texas roads. It's why the Texas Department of Transportation started its Don't Mess With Texas campaign 35 years ago and now has an app where you can tattle on fellow Texans if you see them littering on Texas highways. The app is called Don't Mess With Texas. Just make sure you have a passenger take notes like get the license plate number, make and model of the vehicle. Plug in um, the vehicle make and model, license plate, location and time, and you can actually put in there what you saw them litter, um, whether it came from the passenger side or the driver's side or even the bed of the truck, which is a big problem here in Texas. After the report is processed, the litter bug will receive a letter in the mail from TxDOT reminding them about the incident and a don't mess with Texas litter bag along with information on state litter laws. Your submission is strictly confidential. The litter will not be able to find out who submitted them to TxDOT. TxDOT also encourages Texan drivers to keep the bag in your car for trash that accumulates and then just keep reusing it. Texans take such great pride in their state and they really do appreciate the opportunity to be able to hold each other accountable whenever they do see people litter on Texas roads. So it just gives them the opportunity to feel some ownership over the state that they love. Okay, so another thing she said is, especially if children mm -hmm. say something to their parents, they see their parents littering, then the parents will make sure not to do it again because oh. they realize I don't want to be a bad example for my child. So that app is really cool. Um, don't use it while driving. Don't use it while <laughs> driving. I make sure to say have a passenger right. take down the license plate, make and model. Also that bag that they send you, mm -hmm. that they actually send to the litter bug, um, they sent one to me and I like it because you can really keep it in your car. I've been using it as a mini trash can, oh. dump it out or use it a recycle bin. Recycle. It's very cool. All right, Sarah Spivey, 50, 58. We started in the 40s. Yeah, and uh, temperatures are quickly rising because of dry air. Dry air heats up really easily, and it cools down really quickly, too. This was a look at this morning's low temperatures around the metro area. We got down to 46 in San Antonio, the coolest we've been since March 21st. We got down to 39 at Bernie Stage Airfield and 38 in Kerrville. A wider view here, it was as cool as 49 degrees in Del Rio as cool as 46 in Gonzales, 43 in Pleasanton, and 40 in Hondo. It was a little chilly this morning, but as we just mentioned, temperatures are already on the rise. We've got sunny skies out there, dry conditions, and uh, I know this says 52, but this was taken at the top of the hour. 
58 is more accurate right now uh, outside around San Antonio. 55 at Bernie Stage Airfield, 53 in Canyon Lake, 60 down in Pleasanton, 54 in Rio Medina. It's still in the 40s in the Hill Country, but it won't be for long. It's 62 in Yavali and 59 in Catula. All right, one big difference that you'll notice today from the last few days is that it will not be as windy outside. And the reason for that is this big surface low, which you can see very clearly the counterclockwise movement here. It's pushed off a little bit further to the east and allowed for our winds to calm down quite a bit. And next on the plate is this cold front, which will move through on Wednesday. For now, though, let's enjoy this beautiful weekend. We'll already be at 60 degrees here in just a couple of minutes. 72 at noon, 80 for the afternoon high. So that's an impre impressive temperature jump from 46 to 80 degrees, almost 35 degree difference there. But if you have any uh, evening plans tonight, you know there are some Halloween parties tonight going on. Know that you'll need that light jacket because temperatures are going to drop down to 58 by midnight. Sun will set at 6. 49 this evening. Now we're going to have beautiful dry conditions all day today. Dew points in the 30s. That is pretty dry. By tomorrow, though, dew points will actually be up 10 to 15 degrees. Dew points will be in the 50s. Now that's not necessarily uh, perceptible. Once you get dew points to the 60s, that's where uh, you can really notice the mugginess. And you will notice mugginess by Monday and Tuesday. But again, that cold front will be arriving just in time to allow for us to not get oppressed humid outside. So that cold front will arrive on Wednesday night, Thursday. With it will come a shot at some thunderstorms. But then behind that front, instead of clearing out like we sometimes do and just see tons of sunshine, what's going to end up happening is it'll stay cloudy with areas of scattered showers on Thursday. And that means our highs will only be in the 60s, so it's going to feel a lot more like sweater weather outside. And we'll be looking at temperatures in the 60s for highs on a Friday as well. If you're planning on taking your kids trick or treating tomorrow, just know that there's going to be low humidity. It'll be in the 70s after the sun sets at 648. By the later evening hours, 9 p.m., it'll be in the 60s. Uh, and by the start of Monday, we'll be back into the 50s. So it's going to be a really nice forecast here for the next 48 hours or so. And even by Monday and Tuesday, when we're in the low 80s, it's still going to feel good outside, although a little bit more noticeably muggy out there. And then a front's going to arrive Wednesday that'll bring with it a shot at some storms and some scattered showers on Thursday. Those highs in the 60s. I don't know about you guys, but mm. I enjoy the cooler weather, so I'm looking forward to the week's end. I really do, too, and I also want to tease that tomorrow Sarah Spivey has a really amazing <laughs> Halloween costume. She's going to be debuting at the top of the 8 a.m. Yeah. I have a Halloween costume. I'll be debuting at the end of the 8 a.m. And Max says he'll even play. 949, 58 degrees out. If you missed last night's parade, Day of the Dead, don't worry. We, you still have a chance to enjoy it. Coming up next, how you can catch all the fun. Well, it was a colorful and magical night at the Day of the Dead River Parade last night. Tons of music and beautiful floats. Just a lot of family fun and a nice way to celebrate the tradition that honors those who have passed. All right, so if you didn't get to go to the parade last night or watch it, don't worry, you still have a chance. Just head to ksat.com. It is the story on the homepage, and I got to tell you, amazing stuff. Big credit to all the people who put it together, the people behind the scenes, and of course, you know, Alisa Brera, Steve Spreester, everyone who partook. Sold out event, so you know it was a success. Boom, time now, 9.53, 58 degrees out. Pr prisoners, children, and flapper girls tomorrow in GMSA, we're getting a look at the untold history of an underground shelter in Seguin. All right, so we've been asking Yay! people to send us your Halloween pictures. This is fantastic. A little Napoleon Dynamite here. Glorious. That's an easy costume I, I can wonder, rock. Yeah, make, Max, do it. Do it. Just do it. Just do it. Oh, and this little guy, he wanted to be McDonald's French fries. Who doesn't love McDonald's French fries? It, credit to his parents, because I think they put that together. That looks like um, pool noodles. Oh. Very creative costume. Great job, team. All right, so keep sending us your Halloween pics. We love to see them. You can post them on ksat.com under the Halloween section, which is under the Entertainment tab. We'll continue showing your Halloween pictures through tomorrow.